Hello and welcome to today's video and today we're actually looking at this rather nice uh, record deck which I was given. It is a Garrod 86 SB, synchronous belt drive apparently. Douglas seems to like it for some reason. This is the lid, there is a bit of a crack in the lid which I'm going to attempt to repair and also I'm going to treat the lid to a bit of a polish. There is some formicary type trim on the side uh, which goes all the way round. It does look quite nice, it is a little bit unstuck so I'm going to try and repair that. I've plugged it in and I want to see if it actually works. So obviously I can't get sound out of it at the moment so I haven't connected it to an amplifier. I've been advised that it's only playing on one channel, so I'll probably need to uh, get the entire deck up, have a look at the connection between the tone arm and the phono output. So this is obviously the platter, it's using a nice rubberised finish, uh, rubberised mat as you can see. So we can have a quick look at the belt first off, and there is a belt there which is a little bit hard and a little bit slack I'd say so I will probably want to replace that sooner rather than later but first off let's try and start it so the motor itself sounds a bit noisy There's reasonable torque on said motor, but that belt is past its best, unfortunately. So let's just try that again. I'll just unlock that. So you can see it's currently trying to start. I don't want this to drop onto there so I don't want to damage the stylus so we'll actually put it onto lift mode so we do need to take a look at that rattling noise see exactly what's rattling in there See if I can do that. I can reset that. So let's start. So let's try manual. So let's turn it on. And let's see if it will. continue yeah so it will play I do need to have a look at why that is rattling around like a set of marbles so I don't know what I'm going to attack first I don't know if I'm going to attack the cosmetics which is an easy win or have a look at the mechanical side of things so let's just turn that off pop that over there Cue it down and lock. Let's just take that belt off and see if. So, interestingly, the motor itself isn't making any rattling noise, it must be something around the motor. So, I would be interested to know what is actually going on in there right let's get this somewhere where we can take it apart in relative comfort you will rejoin me shortly so what i've actually done is managed to get this out 
And the one thing I've noticed is, which I was quite surprised at actually, the um, tone arm connects onto this little in interface here, which then goes to, if you look at the other side, some mini jack phonos. The actual, I think one of them was slightly adrift, which would account for the lack of signal, but the connections themselves appear to be fine. There's no, doesn't appear to be any, let's move these around a bit. Yeah, there doesn't appear to be anything moving at all, or any loose wires. It is the motor, unfortunately. If I do that, the noise goes away, but if I come back down again, you can hear that the noise comes back. So I'm probably going to have to get that motor out and have a look, see if there's anything I can do, any bearings I can grease. Um, anyway, let's get this somewhere, as I said before, let's get this somewhere where I can work on it in a bit more comfort. So here we are, somewhere that's a little bit more conducive for working on these sort of things. So let's just whip off the platter. And obviously the platter just lifts straight off like so. And there's the spindle on which the platter sits. And it probably is a good idea to give that a little bit of lubrication if required. It also makes it easier for renewing the belt as well. Um, a lot of decks of this sort of era do have a similar sort of um, set up as regards the actual belt itself they do just sort of lift off the motor by the looks of it is held in with some circlips so that's going to be interesting removing those but we'll give it a go anyway so frankly they're quite large circlips they tend to be easier to find if they do decide to go off into orbit but similar care similar levels of care need to be taken um, a tip that I actually saw on Techmoan's channel is to place a piece of blue or white tack or other tack next to the circlip so that when you do point them off the circlip itself gets stuck into whatever tack you have um, placed there and I thought that was a rather good idea actually and if I had some of the uh, stuff available I would actually be um, using that particular tip in future videos I probably will because I think certainly for the smaller ones the sort of, sort of stuff that he tends to be working on which is um, sort of cassette decks with a lot of fiddly circlips uh, it's actually a really good idea so thank you to Tech Moan's channel for uh, making bringing that to my attention. So there we go. That should be the motor released. So it will probably just pop through there. Now what I'm going to do is to gently lift this up like so, and that should give me ability to pull the motor completely free which I've managed to do. What's quite nice is it appears that we have a spade connector for earth which should come off with a bit of persuasion although I might need actually do you know what's easier unscrew it from there. So we have an earth connector which we can unscrew. I'll just rest that sort of there and grab a stubby crosshead screwdriver just release that from there like so and there are, that's that out of the way I don't mind where the screw goes as long as it's inside the case there's a couple of power connectors on here as well so I'm guessing these are for two different speeds. So the let's have a look at this. So white and 
get that on camera. White and yellow, the top, brown and yellow to the bottom. So brown and yellow out, white and yellow. Always do it holding on to the plastic if you can. Never pull from the wires, you will risk pulling them out completely, which is a mistake I keep making. And there we go, that's the motor removed. What we can do now is we can put the basic chassis out of the way and the turntable out of the way down here. And we can concentrate on the motor. So here's the motor. You can hear it rattling away to itself there. So let's remove this top co cover. I'll actually zoom in on the action. So there's the motor. Let's remove this top cover. You see the motor has got this little stake in there. Which, or a little pin which keeps the spindle in place I would assume. So let's get this out of the way. Does that actually come out completely? Yeah, you can hear it. There's something rattling around in there, definitely. seems to come out to a certain point so I'm guessing it just pulls out like that. There you go, there we are and we're now pretty much at the bare bones of the motor that's what I guess would be a bearing assembly and there is the motor itself we have the core uh, armature of the motor so we have these two coils either side uh, which would be probably north and south very likely and we have these little bearing capsule cup type cup things here so that's very basic test give it a shake see what it does see here Could be this that's rattling around, to be honest with you. That would cause a large amount of rattling. And there's a tiny little screw on here. I thought it was a pin, it's actually a screw, which means I can undo this like so. And then just pull that off, removing this top bearing and then removing that, which is what's probably what's rattling around and causing all of the issues. Now it would appear that this used to be sat on top of there quite happily and what seems to have happened over the years is the adhesive has worn away so it's just doing that basically. So, let's see if we can get it stuck back on to there. So we'll get rid of whatever was holding it on previously. There we go. And let's see if we can use some of this super duper glue to see if we can stick it back on. honestly don't know what this activator does. I've got a feeling it's probably just isopropyl alcohol. I don't think it is anything more spectacularly special than that. It smells quite solventy, but then again glue always smells solventy. And let's see if I can take this off. It's probably stuck in place really, really quite substantially, which I think it has. So, this is what always annoys me about glue. Ah! Ah! That was a 
was annoying and it's ruptured and it's attacking me. Ah, that's actually really painful. Don't ever do that with glue. Anyway, let's blob a bit of glue onto there. Seeing as it's now ruptured. Like so. Try and remove my fingers without killing all my skin on there. Just spread that around a bit, like so. There we go. Ah! Grab the motor at spindle itself, flip that upside down, and then drop that onto there. And make sure that it is centered and in place. Now, before this dries, we need to wipe off all traces of this glue. Otherwise, we will be in a world of pain when we come to reassemble. There we go. And what I'll actually do to give that a bit more glue removal is use a bit of video head cleaner on that. To hopefully get rid of anything glue-like that's left on the outer surface. Now the glue itself does seem to have worked. It has actually got this nicely attached to the motor itself. Now the reason why I haven't discarded it is it because as you can see from these drill marks it actually makes up part of the actual overall balance of this motor. I would assume that not having it would be detrimental to the operation of the motor itself. What I'm going to do is just move everything to one side. And before we lose the effectiveness of this glue completely, I'm going to leave that to dry for a little bit and I'm going to grab the actual deck itself. Here it is. And I'm going to see if I can use some of this glue on here. I'll try and catch it before it dries and I lose all of the glue in there. There is every possibility I might need some more glue to do this. So I'll soon run out of this stuff, but it would be good to see if it does work. Anyway, that's that. Let's flip that onto there like so. Then see if that actually sticks. every possibility it won't but it is worth a go definitely there is also the possibility I might need to use wood glue I think I've got some of that somewhere that will certainly be something that we can try so I'll be honest with you I rather like this sort of fake wood finish so it would be a shame to um, take it off completely if I want because it only has come away at the edges it would be quite nice to save it so 
So I'm probably going to need to glue this edge down as well. But as you can tell, that does seem to be slightly working. Definitely. Um, whoops, that's on to a place I don't want it to be. This is really effective glue, I'm not going to lie. The way it's just sticking everything to itself, including me to myself. The problem is though, it is quite expensive and doesn't last all that long. You know, I think that is actually working. Definitely a good trial, so we need a bit more of that, I think. So we'll get some more of that and we can actually finish this off. I don't see any reason why we won't be able to sort that. Anyway, let's put that to one side because that's going to need more glue than I actually have left. Alright, let's pop this into somewhere where I can pop it into the bin in a little bit. Um, Yep, there we go, down there. And let's put this motor back together. So you can actually see what's happened. The As I was saying, the top weight obviously came off and that caused the motor to... It was still working, but it was rattling around a little bit. Now because we do have a bit of glue residue on here, I'm going to very carefully do this. So take this, just run this around on the newspaper. You don't want to do it too hard. Newspaper, sandpaper. You don't want to do it too hard because you don't want to remove excess amounts of metal. All you want to do is just remove the glue residue, which is what we're doing. And give it a bit of a spritz. And a bit of a wipe, and you should have something that is a lot cleaner and ready to go. That does actually look a lot cleaner. That should, if we try it out, sit in there and rotate freely enough, which it does seem to do. Now we need to remember orientation. We'll soon find out because it'll probably start rotating in the wrong direction when I've reassembled it. Uh, so there was an orientation to this. That goes onto there. And then obviously you've got this one which sits underneath. And we can actually take a look now at these little bearings. So you can see the little bearings inside here. Now they weren't actually at fault so there wasn't actually any issues with said bearings but what we will do 
And we will give them a nice little blob of grease. Just to help pack them out a little bit. Do the same with this one, which is, this one's the bottom bearing, so this will be going right onto the base of the motor. There we go, and that's just nicely packed out. That should improve something. <laughs> that should hopefully improve things a little bit. Just make things a little bit smoother. So, what we want to do now is we're going to take our bottom bearing here, pop that onto there like so. Next, you have this assembly which goes onto there. Then you have the actual motor itself or the, the core of the motor. You just wriggle slightly into place. Then you have the top bearing, which goes on like so. And then you have this top piece which goes on to there like so and then we have the screws to lock it all into place And it should all just nip back together, hopefully. And it certainly has on that side. This side is proving a bit more difficult, although it is actually now coming into its own. So that's that side. And then this side. Wipe. And the motor should run freely, which I'll be honest with you, it's not currently doing. So we probably need to have a bit of a look at that. There is every possibility I've done it up too tight. So let's just release a bit of the tension on both these screws. release a little bit more yeah it's beginning to rotate but not quite there yet a little bit more That is starting to. That's better. It's now freeing off quite nicely, actually. So it seems you can't have it too tight because you will stop the motor rotating at all. But you need it tight enough so that there isn't too much play. It does sound like it's actually scraping on that top plate slightly, so I wonder if it needs a smidge of grease to help it. So if I just take this out again, 
if you get to that point there and then it just pulls out like so as you can see it there it is scraping against the base of the bearing thing itself the actual bearing so I do wonder if it does need to be ever so slightly greased up on both sides. Because obviously it, it, there is going to be a certain amount of contact, although the motor will probably, to a, I think the motor will actually float in the magnetic field. But it's not going to harm it if I... So it looks like there was probably some grease on there at some point in the past. I don't think it's going to harm it too much if I just give it a bit of a helping hand lubrication wise. If it doesn't work we can just dismantle it, clean it all up again and put it back together. I don't think that's going to cause any issues. I certainly hope it won't anyway. We will soon find out. So let's pop that back in there. Pop this back onto there. Then back on top, go through assembly like so, there we go, and then just nip it down a little bit. So we want to get it to a point where it is literally just touching there. You don't want to go too hard because you just lock the whole assembly up. And then there. And then you have a motor that is pretty free moving actually, not bad at all. Yeah. There's not much movement or play and it's rotating quite nicely. Now, final thing is to put the little lock collar back in. So this goes down onto there. And then we just screw this onto the shaft. And there you go. Now the big test is will it work so what I'm going to do first is because there is a bit of belt residue on here we will clean that off that will serve me in good stead when I come to replace the belt itself and that'll work. Let's see what it does when we put it back into the chassis of the unit. So here's the unit, we'll probably do a bit of a zoom out for that to get it into focus, or into the picture at least. And the motor comes up and out. There is literally just the rubber buns that it plugs back into like so. 
Let me put that into there. And then we have the earthen lead, which goes back onto here. Very important that you do earth it, otherwise you effectively make the entire chassis or the entire motor live or blow a fuse, one of the two. Then we have these connectors, so it was uh, what was it? I've actually just realized I forgot to put this motor back together the wrong way because, yeah, the connectors are the wrong way around. I've had a feeling that would happen, not to worry, because we can easily sort that by just whipping this out. So give me a couple of moments whilst I sort this. So I've got the motor running. It's a lot quieter than it was. However, torque is coming back, but if it stops, you have to give it a manual push to get going. So I'm gonna see if I can adjust out some of that. Yeah, so it looks like that's there needs to be some tension on there to keep it spinning. Yeah, I'm wondering if I need to. What do I need to do? Uh, strip it down. Yeah, strip it down and just give that a little bit more of a sand down on the actual spindle itself. So let's just pop this apart again. There's probably not enough clearance. On here. And it's also possible that that top one is slightly proused, but I don't think it is because you would know otherwise. Right, let's see what we can do about that. So bear with me. So after cleaning up some of the glue residue, which there still was a little bit left, we now have something that if I stop the motor and let it go, immediately spins up again. So I think we're getting somewhere with this. That seems to be a lot healthier than it was. It's also a heck of a lot quieter because you don't have that uh, little weight bouncing around on top. And there's also quite a bit more torque on there as well. Right, the next thing, stage, is to put this back into the machine itself. And to do that, I'm going to lift this up. Feed it up underneath and feed it through these rubber boots, these rubber mounts rather, and that should sit like so. Now for this we have these washers that go on like so, we then have the circlips that come into place and slide in. 
and I need to sort those out. So where's that flat blade gone? Now ideally I should be using needle nose pliers for this, but I don't have them to hand immediately. So I'm just going to, because they're quite big, I'm just going to plop them on like so. So that's one. And then I'll grab the second one. Pop that into place. I think that's, actually, that's quite astonishing, these actually push on by hand, because they're so big and quite loose. Well, more the size, because they're so big you get quite a bit of um, purchase of just using your finger on them and they just slip into place. There's the third washer and... And goes onto here and that should do it. There you go. Right, let's see if that goes on. Straight on, complete silence as well. Right, the next basic thing to do is if we get this up again, get this into some kind of position where we can just plug these two back in. So we have one there and one to there. That's your two phono connectors for the tone arm. The rest of the wiring appears to be okay, so we'll just drop this down back onto there. There we go, that's the platter back in place, the turntable y bit. Actually, hang on, just need to check that is. Yeah, that's definitely back. Now, this. Two minds about what to do with that. Do I want to. Give it a spritz of grease, and I think the answer is probably, but not too much. So I'll just give it a smear, like so. And what we'll also do as well, because don't worry, I haven't forgotten is lift this up again ah that's easier said than done come on fella there you go up you come Seems to have stuck in place now. That's slightly irritating. Ah. Give me a couple of moments. Okay, we're back again. So if I just aim this around uh, this way slightly, hopefully you can see that a couple of grease points here so there's one here I can have a nice blob of grease here and here and also here but some of the grease on there is old and pretty dried up to be honest with you We'll just give it a bit of a, a bit of a touch up with the old grease. Which will not do any harm, hopefully. 
if anything it should do it some good and done and now we just need to aim it back down again There we go. Now we have the platter. And the belt. So the belt, what I'm going to do, so I've got the belt looped around ready to go. So I'm going to just keep it looped around the platter and then hold the belt through one of these holes and then lower the platter onto here, onto the spindle and then the belt will tuck under the speed selector and back on like so then you've got the speed selector which just drops the position of the belt actually I'll show you so if you imagine that's rotating you can see there, you change the speed, so from 45 to 33, and you'll see that that rises up, and there's also 33 10 inch, 33 7 inch. And there we are. So, if I turn this on. There we go, that's spinning around quite nicely. Put it on to 45. It's actually quite. It does need a new belt, but there is a fair amount of torque on there at the moment as it stands. Back onto 33. Now I'm going to lift that and I'm going to try and auto start and see if it works any better. So we've got it on auto start at the minute. So let's try, so that's stop, let's try start, and what it should do is it should move the tone arm over like so, and then obviously that should drop down and start playing. But it doesn't look like it's doing that. If I do, I have it over there, and it goes to the end, like so. That goes to stop. And it should then drop down. So that is turning off, that's okay. I do think it's probably just the belt. I've got a feeling that if I do start, just hold down start. see it's coming over and then it'll drop down but you can see that the belt or you can oh, I didn't want to do that that's what I was trying to avoid doing you can hear that the belt is struggling slightly so if I just put it on manual and that's obviously going to spin around quite nicely. Right, let's plop on this. There we go. So 45, 33 and off. Now, annoyingly I don't have my amp set up at the minute so I'm gonna see if I can do it using even though they don't have a phono stage I'm gonna see if I can do it using one of my um, recent restored boom boxes that has a um, aux input so give me a moment I'll just go and grab a record and see what we can do 
So I'll be, I'll be honest with you, I'm feeding it into completely the wrong device. So as you can hear there, that's maximum volume on the, um, uh, the little amplifier. Well, it's actually just the uh, little Panasonic I was working on the other week. So if I just cue that, turn it on, and come to the start of the record, and lower it down. It works. You get both channels. I'm going to do that so I don't want to get a content match. But you get both channels, and I've got to be honest, it's working absolutely perfectly. What I'll want to do next is just to glue these down. But to be honest with you, for the most part, it's working fine. Obviously, I'll want to replace the belt as well, but it's given a pretty good account for itself, even over a completely wrong amplification device, it's still doing a pretty good job. Anyway, pretty pleased with that. If you're, uh, if you have enjoyed this video or indeed found it useful, don't forget to hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe and I will see you again very soon. Thanks for watching, take care and see you soon.